Hello guys and welcome to my next tutorial. Uh, we are playing now with Laravel 10.x and also we are using Backpack and so we have already installed this. If you don't know how to install it, you could check our uh, previous video. But now uh, we will actually create a migration, uh, create tax table and then add the create read update delete for it inside the admin area. Why we need this? This is one of the first steps when we are creating article system. And in our article system, we want to have uh, articles which could have different tags. And then those articles could should have actually a rich text editor and also they need to have images. So first we will be creating the tags. Uh, the, in order for us to create tags, we need to create a migration. If you need to read more about migrations and why uh, we use them, long story short, when you run any command similar to the one that I'm currently adding, it will create a file for you. That file will be stored inside your app. And then you have a database folder and then you have migrations. And inside the migration folder, it will automatically create a file. In that file, we have two methods. We have up method and we have down method. The idea is that uh, when you execute the migration, the up method is being called. When you roll back a migration, the down method is being called. Migrations are the way how you keep your database structure up to date. And also you have like a good uh, uh, journal uh, consisting of all the information and all the operations that you executed. So um, we already created these files and uh, we would like to have uh, uh, some information about our migration. And I will even enrich the article while we are creating the video. This is something that I haven't done before. So we need to alter the migration file uh, and altering the migration file means update this up method by simply pasting it. So I'm just updating the method and I'm saying, hey, I want to have a tax table. I want to have name and SLUG uh, items and they should be unique. And this is sufficient to make sure that uh, it will consist of all the information that we need. The next thing that we we'll, uh, have to do is make sure that we will execute the migration. We'll say, hey, PHP Artisan migrates. And we have received a notification that uh, migration was executed successfully. And executing the migration successfully uh, means that uh, uh, it updated the database. How could we check the database? Well, I could open a new screen and say, hey, walk to my scale, show me the databases, use Laravel because this is the database that I'm using and then show me the tables. And then I could say select all from or just describe table tax, uh, describe tax. And this is the table that we just created. And if I say select all from migrations, it's actually showing me all the information uh, and all the migrations that were executed. And uh, I will add these two screenshots to the article. So if anyone is interested in uh, seeing what we are uh, running, uh, then uh, you should be able to track and see, do you get the same results? So we have the table created and also we see the migration. Now we have a table, we have the structure. What we need to do is when you are inside your admin, uh, you want to have a menu item and then being able to add a new tax. In order for you to, to do that, uh, you need to actually execute PHP, Artisan, and then Backpack, Crud, Tag. And uh, I got an error in here. And the reason that I've got an error is I'm not inside my example app, which actually has the information. And when you click Run, 
it will ask me, hey, do you want to use request array or field for the validation? I will use request. And then it generated for me model. It generated for me controller. It generated for me tag request where we have the validation. It updated the uh, roots and also created the view. And if I zoom out and click refresh, now I see tags in here. I see a listing. I could create a tag, name, name, save it, and then continue. Second tag, or let's say third tag. And now I already have a couple of tags which are available for me. I could uh, even delete of them and edit. Everything is uh, uh, ready. And uh, I could make a lot of changes. Another thing that we need to do, however, is actually uh, making sure that uh, we have some sort of validation. One of the pain points in any app is, do you have validation? Usually people uh, miss the validation. And how could you uh, confirm that they miss the validation? Well, if I go and click attack and just save, and I've got an error. This is why uh, if there is no validation on the data, uh, we could face some errors. And uh, that's why uh, if there is no validation, this is what you get. How we could fix it? Well, um, inside Laravel, uh, there are multiple ways to do that. But one of the ways is we have app, then HTTP, then middleware. And inside the middleware, uh, you could make custom rules or you could go to requests and requests. Currently, you see we have tag request and the tag request is then used inside the controller. And this means that if any request is coming to that controller, then uh, inside that uh, tag request, uh, we could make the validation. So I go to tag request. And in here, we have authorize, we have rules, and the rules are, are empty. But uh, we could uh, uncomment them and say, hey, this is the name, this is this work field, and I want it to be required. How do I know uh, which keys to use? Well, these are the keys in the table. So if you use name and swag, then you could use name and swag here. And if someone says, okay, but how do I find out uh, what are the validation options? I have added a link. Uh, you open the validation rules and uh, there are plenty of them. You choose, you read from the docs and then you apply them. And don't worry if you have any custom validation, you could easily write your own rule and that your own rule will allow you uh, to follow your business logic. So what is the difference now? I have already updated uh, the uh, request. And when I try to save it, I already get an error. If I add some text, I have a validation. And thanks to that, uh, I'm making sure that it follows my business logic. Another thing that you should know is, uh, yes, you could add custom attributes and etc. But for the sake of this initial tutorial, uh, you should be aware that you could uh, have different error messages. And how do you alter the messages? You do that inside this public function messages. And in the array, you could say, hey, for the name, when the error is related to required, no way you go without a name. You could add any custom errors that you would like to have. So if I try to save it, now for the name, I get a specific error, which is different than the regular one generated. And you could do that for any field with any validation rule that you are applying. Uh, the structure is name of the field dot name of the error. So I could say uh, name, let's go with the other, swap dot, dot min. Uh, be more descriptive like this. And if I go one step back 
and add at least one symbol, we will see that for the second few, we have the error be more descriptive, where the first one is, it should be at least five characters. So this is by simply modifying the messages. And what you need to remember is uh, anyone could do this. You could uh, make sure that you follow your business logic. And if you're missing a rule, you could simply create one. This is how we quickly managed to actually generate a create, read, update, delete for a table and create the table inside one of them. 